Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we left off, we started the first part of Chapter 3, and now we're on to the trial. Um, I have turned the volume of the game up a little bit. Uh, well, actually, a lot, because it was really quiet last time, so it should be better now. Uh, I also want to get out of the way. I'm sorry for not uploading. I'm still, like, it's honestly, recording videos is still kind of a, when I'm motivated, I'll do it, but if I'm not, then I'm not going to force it type of thing. Um, it'll probably be a lot more scheduled once school comes around, which is pretty soon. Not not super happy about that, but whatever. Um, but yeah, videos aren't necessarily the main priority right now. Just just to let you guys know. I don't know if I'm gonna make another Zack Anime Corner. I don't know. People really seem to have just dropped interest in that series. Um, but then again, people are pretty. And it's just, Actually, you know what? Take back what I said. I'm probably going to just continue it anyways. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor! Maggie! Ah! D Detective Gumshoe! Ah, are you doing alright? How are you feeling? I just need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. Don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger! And you! Y yes You better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? You screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. Uh, I think he's serious. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course! I got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Oh, let's go. I'm so excited. I'm excited to do Gato's voice again. He's just very fun to voice. <laughs> it's a shame he's only in this game. Quarter star session for the trial of Maggie Bride. The defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> what, 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 what? Mm, bitter. Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Oh! What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was... You was talking to me? It was a little, well, uh, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? <laughs> so, Mr. Gatto, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied the law or not. Then that's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Gatto, please summon your first witness. Alright. Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and occupation? Witness! State your name for the court! Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. The name's Police Department Detective... Occupation? Dick Gumshoe. <laughs> Other way around, Detective. Huh? Oh, uh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of the case since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the in initial investigation is tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really giving everything he's got. For everyone's sake, got everything under control, sorry. I see, subject of Gumshoe. Would you outline the court the basic facts of this case? Y y yes sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elg. He was- Glenn Elg. Gl Glenn Elg. Gl I can't think of the pun. <laughs> He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this in evidence. 
Why are we getting lag? Ah, uh, and here are the floor pan plans of the restaurant. Okay, we need to... This lag needs to stop. I think it's just the first time for everything once you boot it up every once in a while. This definitely a real 3DS. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. Time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Gene Armstrong, the owner and chef, and a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. Still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Gum detective, take up this hammer and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Uh, yes sir. Witness testimony, the incident. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Eld, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup, and what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, uh, it looks like Miss Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. Aww. Using the dark aromatic depth of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to bring with your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you that wasn't me. Cross-examination. Uh, so the one that really stood out to me is, and she seems to have a motive. Some kind of motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what my golden rule is, detective? Check out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Huh? I don't get it. I'm saying, we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning lottery ticket for half a million. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I say, press harder. Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Ha! I have here in my hand. The very ticket in question. Lost the half a million dollar lottery ticket? One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search of the defendant. W what? Order, order! Ha! She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. Ha, <laughs> I get it. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court, immediately. Mm, I'd better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just understood. I'm like, wait, what does he say? Oh, he wants to steal. The ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too, but it feels heavier now somehow. Huh, half a million dollars, do you say? <laughs> it's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. I bet he wants to see it was found on Maggie's person. You really think there are any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know. But Gumshoe told us out in the lobby. He said we'd be forming a united front, right? How will we win the case if he doesn't throw us a line? I don't have a whole lot of options right now. The best I can do is gather the facts together, I guess. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? Well, what is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. 
She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. And I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps the view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Ha! That argument is as weak as the copy of Trebian Trite. I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. This is a photograph taken from the near, taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of crime. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? Ugh. Certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. So traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else. Not sure if I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid or was it a powder? If I had to put it in the layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Ha! <laughs> Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? The victim took his coffee black, no sugar. Mm. Seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I mean, there's no... Yeah. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Ah, uh, <laughs> What piece was it again? This! Should I be grateful this coffee is only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Uh, this is the, uh, the victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's coffee cup. Take a good look at the rim, trim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There's clearly a coffee stain on it. Inclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison. Poison coffee that was in his cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this! Ugh! For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. That's enough! The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond a reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There's also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. <laughs> Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With the one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That stain looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ha! <laughs> it seems the star of our play was a little flustered and somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. 
something else? I presume you mean, of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? The search carried right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide, the very poison used by the killer, was in her apron pocket. A bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket. Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? Order, order, order! The court will accept these items in evidence. Oh God. Well, something's still bothering me, Mr. Gatto. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that is smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told, just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? N no way, sir. That's, it's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking someone, while taking their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Plus, then like then I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. Um, I thought everyone knew what it was already. Hmm, well, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last verdict I ruled on this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence, they have all been clearly established. Well, Trite, it seems you really are a phony after all. Ugh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witne Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. Uh, witness testimony, the investigation. The crime team was reported at 2.25 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, Trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So, let the fun begin. Boom! Wait a sec. Huh? D did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you just said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the kick? Ugh. How were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's still let down. He's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery tickets. Seems Mr. Glenn had visited his doctor before he went to Trivi Inn. He got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? Ha! <laughs> You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence. Desperate, are you, Trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? Yeah! Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Uh, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trebian. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal! Oh, indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. 
and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Oh, order! Order! Well, Mr. Gatto, what do you have to say to that? Ha! Huh. That's all. Uh... <laughs> what? Read for the court. Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the cl clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Otolary. Good lord. Clinic? O Otolaryngological. Odin Larry Judge? Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Gatto? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was... A that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. They found traces of the medication on the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. Seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medicine while he was at Trey the Inn. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. It seems this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. No. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. But I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? I, s I should save. Only moments ago, Mr. Gatto made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trey Bien. In that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? Well, the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However, however insignif insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would Why can't I speak? Oh my god! It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either, but it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ah. What's enough? Mr. Gatto, is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Gatto. Uh, I, uh, I've got my own witness I like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial, trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial, and that is something that bothers me. Yay! Good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Ha! <laughs> I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. There's no way we're doing an actual to be continued, right? I'm 30 minutes into this, probably like 25 for you guys. Whew, that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. But I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray me like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's gotta do his job, right? It's okay, I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurts this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you gonna be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. No, okay, cool. I was like, there's no way they're putting this to a to be continued, right? <laughs> Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Gatto, your next witness, please. 
Prosecution calls the lucky old timer who got the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? <laughs> Name an occupation if you don't mind. Name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Ha! Listen, you youngin! How much... How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do! Or I did, back in Japan, I brought a family crest on kimonos! My ancestors were embro- Okay. Sorry, I skipped that by accident. Wow, real craftsmen! They're the last of a dying breed! Write a names on the wet cut. Sorry, last of the real ones. <laughs> hey, maybe I should embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take this- Yeah, I shouldn't make go that much. So I had to take this job working the cash register at a burger joint pretending to smile. The burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Well then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, that sounds too much like Judge. Oh, yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of, jo of Javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? Uh, orange seed. These are everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. I'm oh, sorry, I keep switching voices. And please, tell the court. Well, he is. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. What I witnessed. A young man was reading the sports paper. The servant girl brought him a Javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the servant girl, right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a servant girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Ha! You're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. It's wireless and spectacles, I tell ya. Uh, excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, uh, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Y yes your honor. Cross-examination. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I, I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyes say it's fine. The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. Now I saw what the servant girl put in the Javachino as well. I bet I know it's kind of coming up and something tells me I'm not gonna like it. Your Honor. We need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask the, that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Mm, I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She was very conspicuously putting some white powder in there. D did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took out some small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? In a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Ha! <laughs> a bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is, that's the one. That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put in the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Ugh. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry. You can see all the way up to her, her, you know. She's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone can wear just, just such a uniform, even me. Mr. Wright, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick, you gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. <laughs> there are other things I recognize about her, too. Seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. 
But what matters is whether or not that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant, I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon on her hair, and the apron straps were loose. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance, but what about the most crucial detail of all, her face? Ha! As if I wouldn't remember that! The witness noticed the straps on the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can't even tell you the color of the ribbon of her hair, it was red! So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Ask about the strap. Ask about the waitress's back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitresses from the front at all? The waitress from the front at all? Ha! He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe somebody. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment! I'm telling you I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons! I'm just telling you what I saw! Mr. Kudo, court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observe from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure! This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. If I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. I'm not interested about her when I saw her from the front. <gasps> Boy! That is incorrect! That is incorrect! That is incorrect! Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. Ha! That filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't! Do you think I forget something as dirty as that? Hmm? Well, you half-witted clot! Clot? Wow, I, I thought he was going to say Claude. You, Claude! <laughs> what? What is it? Ever since I said you half witted Claude, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh. And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Uh. Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Witness! You can't just oops your way out of this. Ha! <laughs> well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Mr. Maggie Bird. Miss Maggie Bird, not Mr. <laughs> exactly. And when that waitress put and when that one waitress puts the poison in the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Mm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion where I forgot what a what burger a customer wanted. He can't remember? Probably more like he's messed... Wait, what? Oh, he, oh, oh, so, sorry, yeah, I misunderstood this. He can't remember? He can't remember? Probably more like he's messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well, let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. About the victim. He was another one of those pesky yum types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the nosy brat kept rustling his pages. The young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well, and the serving girl in question brought over the javachino. The little fidget picked up this cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you know what types who are all so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. <laughs> About the victim. Oh. 
Okay, I don't wanna... I don't know why this is a contradiction, but I guess it is. Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory? I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing! If I got anything wrong, I'll eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Oh, what is this, kindergarten? But I would like the, the court to please take a look at this. Oh, I see. I'll slow. Oh, oh my god, Zach, seriously? Ah, because the handle, you would drink the cup of coffee with your right hand if you if that's the way that he sipped it. Yeah, okay. Lost the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim, you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there's a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Oh! Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witnesses better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! If you think I'm gonna stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about the, excuse me, that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony? The young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. <laughs> Wait, who, me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Jerry, why not hear a little more? Mr. Gatto! But this is my 16th cup of coffee, so this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. Oh, God. Are you seriously doing this? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as, as the green lens on his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. Then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. It's left hand. We know the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a small computer monitor, often used by programmers. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. H HD TV, DVD, CD, all these new fangled letters drive me mad. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true. He doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts, and good old black and white. I don't see an immediate contradiction. Objection! Oh, okay, I got a first try, JK. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. Wh what did you just say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. Sorry, the this makes sense. Um, I was confused about the wording, um, but I, I get it now. That's right. It's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear, because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. Huh. P pigeon mm -hmm -hmm. Pretty pigeon. Mm -hmm -hmm. <laughs> order, order, order! The witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Gatto, ah, a single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the room clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right. That lad drank his javachino with his left hand. 
Let me put it. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly, the victim used both hands. Took a sip of the. Ah, uh, he took a sip of the copy and held in his right hand, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. But it was instant. Impossible. The witness had already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. L drank the poison coffee like this. Sadly, Mr. Grotto, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory was credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court, but to be frank, his testimony is a farce. T Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old foggy! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, you can't reach me from there. <laughs> I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Hold it! Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo? Fix that blue-suited young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his own T's across his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut since until now. There's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance! I want another crack at you, you young, you young shark! Me? Doesn't it mean like I'm some sort of evil shogun? Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 70th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the coffee you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 60 year old, 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man. That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. Ha <laughs> ha! You better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's gotta be using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. <laughs> The final showdown. First of all, I want to stress that this might not be no this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of myself. The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke, and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. I don't think that's right. Nope, that's false. Eh, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor, defenseless old man? No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what, probably? That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain, and that's why you all- and that's why- that's all you can think of. Very well, Mr. Wright, your final cross-examination, please. I mean, this one's pretty easy. It's a pretty big contradiction. Uh, the boy slumped over at the table as soon as he took one to his job, Gino. Wow, the clumsy idiot upset the base. He knocked it right. I'm sorry, dude, but that is, uh, not correct. So, uh... Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Huh, so what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, granddad? I'm no granddad of yours, hopscotch! Ow, ow! Enough! If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. Ah! What is it now? I just remembered something! Y yes go on. The broken vase! Haha, <laughs> it was on my table. What? Haha, <laughs> well, you see... It startled me when that young lad collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. 
But based on your table? <laughs> yeah, it was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. <laughs> God was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> just fade to oh my god. I thought I wish that was just to be continued. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly owned your kudos for today. Uh I'd like to ask a question now. Have I uh have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Ah, oh, wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes, I remember something else. Belief, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me! Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been pr positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the quality in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from him with his left hand. And the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it! I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There is one more thing before I call the day's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from. He is, the, he is most insistent that his testimony should be of use, so he summarized it accordingly in this statement. Uh, okay. Then we each have a copy of it, if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution doesn't need props like that. God is really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies. My own, yours, and Mr. Gatto's. Yes, Your Honor. Victor's testimony. I'm sorry? This isn't a piece of testimony, more like a five-year-old's apology. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase in my seat. I'm sorry. What? Okay. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. This court is adjourned. To be continued. Oh boy, well I've been recording for about an hour now. It's probably going to be a bit closer to like 50 minutes-ish though. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, all the stuff to see more of this awesome, awesome game. We'll have some, uh, some other stuff coming soon. Um, Zach's Anime Corner should be coming out, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. And, uh, actually, I don't know when you're seeing this. Are you seeing this on Wednesday or Thursday? I don't know if I want to edit, so you're probably seeing this on Thursday. Okay, well, um, I guess it'll come out tomorrow anyways. Or maybe it's already out, and I'm being stupid. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all, uh, probably maybe tomorrow with more Phoenix Wright. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much, and, uh... Bye.